Welcome back guys. Or if you're new to my channel, this is Automotive Anonymous and I'm currently driving a Denali, as you can see by the steering wheel. But more specifically, it's the third generation Canyon, which started last year for 2023. And these are a really cool truck, as you can see, not just because they have ventilated seats, they're more aggressive and they offer a whole lot of things and they do it all better than the second gen ever wish it could. If you're interested in how fast these vehicles are compared to the second generation, I actually just composed a zero to 60 comparison with the diesel, the V6, and a high and middle output 2.7 liter turbo engine. But this video is about kind of a quick point of view, mostly driving impressions of the new Denali, the Apex of the GMC, whereas the ZR2 is the Apex of the Colorado. And these are cool. There's a lot of safety features, blind spot, basic heads up display. And this having the high output turbo max engine makes about 310 horse, but more importantly, 430 foot pound feet of the twisty torque. And that's all down low. So even when you ride out a gear, it doesn't have to downshift nearly as often. But if it does downshift, that's from the 8L80 eight speed automatic transmission, which can be found in the Turbo Max Silverados. So it's a very popular transmission. It's been out for quite a while. And even my backpack agrees that this is a really nice interior. On the Denali, what do you expect but the best of materials? But it's honestly not all sunshine and rainbows. The Denali, the Canyon, the Colorado, they have their problems. They're not perfect trucks. In fact, on the forums, there's been a lot of complaints, a lot of concerns, and even some cases of people being stranded from theirs. So there's a lot that you might want to look into. If you're going to drop 50 grand on a luxury mid-sized truck, do your homework, do your research. But this video isn't to get into those isolated incidences that for all I know, it could be less than 1% of the people who own one of these who are actually reporting it. Although I think GM has had some supply chain issues and a lot of the 2024s haven't been out like they were expecting to, and we're already into March. But if you are interested in one of these trucks, this one specifically, it's slightly used and you can find it at Twin Falls Chevy. I'll link them below if you're interested. But otherwise, back up to speed. Two-wheel drive, even with traction on, it gets not sideways, but it does get a little bit squiggly in the rear. You can kind of feel the wheel hopping, it bounces around, but honestly, I'm having a lot of fun. The wheel's heated, my heated seats are on. I have, you know, the HVAC on low, and honestly, it's a really nice ride. Visibility is fantastic. The eight pillar's not too thick, but what the heck happened to the oh crap bar on either the eight pillar or even the basic one that used to be up here on trucks? What is happening to mid-size and full-size trucks? The passenger gets one, so I can't imagine that that's a safety issue like a, like a front pillar airbag. But if you guys know why that doesn't exist, let me know. Otherwise, the B pillar is a little bit thicker and then the C in the back, a little bit more so. But those side mirrors do a really good job to show you what's going on. And even driving through the country, I feel like I can see at quite a distance. I did have to hop a little bit to get up here. Maybe a running board or an electric lowering one would have been nice. But at five foot 11, this is a pretty tall truck and mid-sized trucks really have gone pretty, pretty big. But these Falcon tires, they're pretty aggressive and they do a good job to slow you down, even at about a third of the brake pedal. I honestly can't complain. I'm pretty happy with it. But once again, back up to speed. That Turbo Max engine really has a lot of low end torque, and when you see the 0 to 60 GPS graph, first gear always pulls really hard and it teeters close to a, a full G for, you know, a couple milliseconds, anyways, before the power really drops off, and then that turbo boost is not sustainable in the higher gears. But just driving it right now, going 75, and the previous owner, for the few thousand miles that this has, they've averaged over 17. This actually has about a 21 gallon tank. And depending on your configuration, your powertrain, and even the weight of the vehicle, because these range from about 4,600 pounds for the basic two-wheel drive work truck to about 5,300 pounds for probably a loaded Denali like this, they get up to about 17 city, maybe about 21 highway. So your max road trip and range, 21 miles per gallon times the 21 gallon tank, you know, in the 440 ballpark. So you can go pretty far in your mid-sized truck, but what you gotta keep in mind how are the people in the back going to appreciate it? There's not a lot of room back there. 
and five foot 11 sitting behind myself. I'm not very comfortable. My head touches the ceiling basically, my knees touch. Dang, the back of the seat rest. But from the driver position, it's really nice. This is a nice place to be. Honestly, guys, I've driven a few of the older, the second gen Colorados and Canyons, and I actually had two different friends who did overland builds out of the ZR2s, and they didn't keep theirs for more than a few years. I think they were starting to see some GM reliability problems, and that was with, I think they both had the naturally aspirated 3.6 liter in those ones. I'm hoping that these ones hold up better. The materials, even, you know, like the, the hard plastic on the dashboard, it already looks so much better than the second gen. Same thing on the doors. I think GM knows that people in 2024, they want nice interiors, especially if you're gonna buy the Denali. This is the highest one. So those are the best materials you get, but the Bose speakers do sound good. Insulation from the wind, pretty good as well. And overall, initial impressions, kind of like the JD Power initial quality testing, it's really good. I just hope that you guys that buy one of these are happy long-term and that these hold up really well. For instance, in the last month, I drove a 220,000 mile 09 Tacoma and that thing, you know, give it a good detailing and it would look and feel about as good as it came off of the factory showroom. And I can say that as someone who used to own a second gen Tacoma who bought brand new, I'm hoping that these will hold up as well. I do think that this Turbo Max engine in this smaller 5,000 pound package versus, you know, mid five to 6,000 pound Silverado, it's gonna be less stressed as is the transmission. So hopefully you're not gonna have powertrain issues at any point. And on the forums, it seems like the 2.7 liter four cylinder Turbo Max Silverados honestly are the most reliable, more so than the V8s with the cylinder deactivation and all of that, the problems that that can cause dropping lifters and stuff down the road. Um, or dropping valves, whatever the problem is. But this initial quality, fantastic. Is it better than the 2024 Tacoma? Well, that's gonna be that's gonna be questionable. I think these look better, at least in pictures, I think they look a lot better. Most of us haven't seen a 24 Tacoma yet, but a lot of us have started to see the 23 Colorado and Canyon twins. So I do want you to comment below which one you think looks better. Which one's more powerful? Well. The high output version of this is more powerful until the hybridized version of the Tacoma come out. That's gonna be a pricey truck and honestly, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's gonna be a $60,000 truck by the time it has its markup, its dealer options, its destination charges, all the, all the nonsense that makes trucks way too expensive and makes them as much as a loaded full-size truck was before COVID, but we will see. This is just subjective thoughts and opinions, and honestly, guys, I really hope you guys have the chance to drive one of these in whatever configuration. I actually just hopped out of an LT Colorado in that zero to 60 test I was working on, and this is a fun truck. They look good. They look really good. They're powerful, they're potent, and you feel nice driving them. In fact, I'm actually looking down on this last generation Ford Explorer or this older square body or OBS, I should say, Silverado. So you have pretty good height when you're driving one of these. But anyways, guys, if you're liking this video, please consider liking this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Comment your thoughts and opinions below. This was not well thought out. This was just a fun vehicle to test drive. I include, I did a zero to 60 with it. And honestly, I just didn't want to give it back quite yet. I want to drive it a little bit more. So I hope I didn't ramble on for too long. I'll try to keep this video to sub 10 minutes and yeah, let's do the zero to 60 and then we'll say our final thoughts. Zero to 60 in the high output Turbo Max Denali. Density altitude's 2,400 feet, so this one's down on power. Probably about 4% even though it's a turbo. Four auto, brake rev, traction off, let's go. True zero to 60 came in at net 6.92, which I've already done a previous test of that and it was also in the 690s true time. So I think the bigger wheels and tires on this Denali slowed down a little bit over the non-high output lower trim levels with the smaller wheels. Kind of interesting. Final thoughts, the Denali is, I don't know what the future will be. I don't know how well these will hold up, but so far the Turbo Max engine has been out for a few years in the current generation Silverado and it's potent. Whether you're doing light acceleration, people's reports of towing, or anything else, I think this is a really good truck. I think this is a really good competitor. As long as you can find a good deal and one that works for you. But shop around, check out the competition. 
Heck, even drive the Honda Ridgeline because who knows what kind of truck you might really need and what might speak to you. But definitely check this out, the Colorado equivalent, which is usually a little bit cheaper. And of course, the new 2024 Toyota Tacoma. But anyways, guys, I hope you found this helpful. I hope you found this useful. It's a fast truck, sub seven seconds, zero to 60. And if you wanna see how fast the last gen was, check out that video. Otherwise, until next time, see ya.